Hello, today I'm going to be proving the Lucas Lammer primality test, or at least part of it. I am not sure exactly how far I'll get, but um, let's get started. So first of all, I will explain what the Lucas Lammer primality test is. It is a test to determine if a specific type of number is a prime number. A prime number is a number that is not divisible by any other number except for one in itself. For an example, 4 is not a prime number because 4 is divisible by 2. 5 is a prime number because 5 is only divisible by 1 in 5. So the lucas Lammer primality test is important because it basically enables you to find a certain, if, if a certain type of prime number, or, um, like it allows you to detect them. Like there's a specific type of number called the Mersenne number, and using this test you will be able to relatively quickly determine um, whether or not that number is a prime. Um, so, and this is how, so the largest primes that are known are generated using this test. So that's why I think it's pretty cool. And okay, so now let's get started. First, it's a primality test, which means sort of like a test to check if it's prime. Primality means that it's prime. So if something ha is, has primality, I guess that would mean it's just prime. So anyway, so let's have an example. So say I want to find out whether uh, like 8 is prime, right? Well, one thing I could do is I could just like go, well, in, in this case this works quite nicely. You can just divide by 2 and see it's divisible by 2, so therefore it's not a prime. Say I had a number like, this is just some random number. I mean, all right, so th this number, when they get pretty big like this, you don't want to have to check every single divisor because that would take a very long time, right? So th the problem here is that we, we need a method to find out whether a number is prime or not without checking if it's divisible by, like, a bunch of numbers. So that that's why this algorithm is important. So this algorithm only deals with a specific type of number called the Mersenne number. A Mersenne number is a number that's one less type than a power of two. Like, 31 is a Mersenne number, so is 63, because they're one less than a power 2. 31 is one less than 32, and 63 is one less than 64. So, that is where the lucas Lemmer primality test applies on Mersenne numbers. And it will tell you whether or not they're prime or not. A Mersenne number that is prime is called a Mersenne prime. So, 31, because it's prime, and it's a Mersenne number, you would call it a Mersenne prime. 63 is a Mersenne number, but it's not prime, so it's just a Mersenne number. It's not a Mersenne prime because it's not prime. So let's first let me explain how the test works. Then we can try it out on 31 and 63, and the test will show that 31 is prime and 63 is not prime. And remember, this test only works for Mersenne numbers, but because both of those are Mersenne numbers, this test will accurately detect whether or not those are primes. Now, for small numbers like this, we can just trivially check all divisors and know that 31 is prime and 63 is not prime. So we know that the test should say 31, like it should say 31 is prime and 63 is not prime. So let me explain how the test works. So you basically have a a sequence. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Okay. So it's a recursive sequence, right there. S0 is equal to 4. That means the 0th term in the sequence is 4. To find the next term, you square the 0th term and subtract 2. That will give you S1, the first term. Well, although technically the first is 0th, but whatever. Um, so then to find the next term after that, you square that and add 2. So using this, if you wanted to find S100, you would, you would build up from S0, S1, S2, da 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 da. So now we have to find a sequence. Um, you may be asking, where's the test part? Well, it has to do with the sequence. So let me see. If I can, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So basically, what we do is we find. Okay. So say we want to test. What? So say, say we have some number 2 to the power of k minus 1. 
that's a Mercy number because a Mercy number is one less than the power of two. And we want to check whether or not that is prime. What we can do is we can find SK of a minus two and see basically see whether or not the number that we want to check if it's prime divides it. Um, yeah. So what we want to check is, is this true? And if it is true, that means that d to k minus 1 is a prime. If it's not true, that means it is not a prime. Okay, so let's show some examples. Earlier we figured out that 31 and 63 were both machine numbers, so therefore we can use this test on them. Remember that if they were not machine numbers, we could not use this test on them because this test is only for machine numbers, which is one less than the power of two. Okay, so let's start with 31. Remember, 31 is prime, so this test should turn out saying yes, it's prime. Okay, so we want to find, is this number prime? Now, first what we do is we roll just one less than the power of two, and that power of two is five. Two to the power of five minus one. Right. Alright, so it's 2 to the power of 5 minus 1, and we want to figure out whether or not this is prime. Well, according to our test, what we got back, back here, uh, we, we have this. So, we need to check sorry, whether 2 to the 5 minus 1 divides s k minus 2. In this case, k is equal to 5, so s3. So, so we need to check, first we need to find what s3 is equal to. So, to do that, we are going to do a recursive sort of pattern. Give me one second. Okay. So first of all, S0 was defined up here. It is equal to 4. And the reason we're finding S3 is because we need to check whether or not 2 to 5 minus 1 divides S3. Okay, so now S1 is going to be the previous term squared minus 2, which is 14. because it is defined right there. That is how we find the next term. We will do the same thing. Um, give me one second to pull up a calculator. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, the next number. Yeah, all right. The next number in our sequence is 100 and not, oh, sorry, I forgot to write it down, I'm sorry. 194. That is S2. And now we need to find S3. To do that, we will square S2, which is 194, and then subtract 2 from that, and that will give us S3. So I'm going to type that into my calculator. Okay. Okay. So this is S3. I squared S2 and subtracted 2. So now we know what S3 is. So remember, the lucas Limer primality test says that um, this, this right here, by the way, this symbol means it divides. So this is the same as saying 2 to k minus 1 divides sk minus 2, and that is equivalent to 2 to k minus 1 being prime. So we want to figure out whether or not 2 to 5 minus 1 is prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to take... 2 to 5 minus 1, see if that divides S3, which is this. 2 to 5 minus 1 is 31. So all we need to do is check, does 31 divide 37,635? S3 is 37,635. So now I'm, so all, what we're going to figure out right now is, is this true? Does 31, remember this symbol just means divides right here? 37,635. So I'm going to type that into my calculator. And... Okay, give me one thing. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so there, there's there's like a slight mistake in the calculations. That I think. Give me one thing. Oh, oh, I see. I, I'm sorry. Uh, earlier when I was trying to calculate S three, um. Sorry, earlier, if you remember back here, I was trying to calculate S3. I typed the wrong thing into my calculator. The correct value was 37,634. 
So therefore, we're not checking whether or not it divides 37,675. We're checking whether or not it divides 37,634. So now I'm going to retest that to see if that is now true. And sure enough, it is. Three, oh, sorry, 37,634 divided by 31 is 1,214 exactly. Therefore, 31 does divide S3. So therefore, 31 is a prime. So we have found an example where the lucas Lemmer primality test predicts that a number is prime, and it turns out to be prime. Now we will show an example where it says, where the lucas Lemmer primality test says that a number is not a prime, and that number is not a prime. So 63 is not a prime because it is divisible by 3. So we are going to run 63 through the lucas Lemmer primality test and see what we get out. So 63 is 2 to the power of 6 minus 1. Okay, right there. So, therefore, remember, according to our thing, this is equivalent to being prime. Um, so, k is equal to 6 in this case. So, therefore, we want to see if 2 to the power of 6 minus 1 divides S4. Well, we already went to all the trouble calculating S1 through 3. So, what we can do is I'm just going to find S4 off this value we already calculated. So, I don't have to recalculate the entire thing. I'm going to plug that into my calculator. Give me one second. Okay. Um, so this is a really large number. I'm just going to write it down. Um, but basically, yeah, we have this really large number. Um, and yeah. So S4 is equal to this giant number, and we want to see whether or not that this is S4, and we want to see whether or not 2 to the power of 6 minus 1 divides that. 2 to the power of 6 minus 1 is 63, so we want to see whether or not that divides this humongous number. Okay. Okay, according to my calculator, it does not divide that huge number. So therefore, the criterion uh, given here are not filled because this is not true when k equals 6. So therefore, this number is not prime, which um, is, is correct because as we figured out earlier, 63 is divided by 3 and therefore is not prime. So we have two examples, one where the lucas Lemmer primality test says, okay, that number is prime and it turns out to be prime. One where it says that number is not prime, the number that is not prime is called composite. So it says that number is composite and it turns out to be composite. Um, so you might be wondering, like, well, how do we know that it always works, right? I mean, what if it only works up to like 7 billion and 3 and then after that it can predict the wrong stuff? And so that's where we are going to be covering. So we are going to be proving that when this test says it's prime, it is prime. And when this test says it is not prime, it is not prime. Um, this is pretty complex. Uh, there's a lot of very beautiful math uh, throughout um, some group theory, which is very nice. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. This is the end of part one, and I hope you watch part two. Thank you for watching this video. Bye.